Hello everyone and welcome back to Life and Times of Jay Carver, part three. If you haven't seen the first two parts yet, check them out. We'll put like one here, something like that. The other one will go like, actually on this side. We'll put them one, two right here. So if you haven't seen them yet, go check those out. Uh, I've been telling the story of how I got into poker and as of the last episode, I it was the end of the first year playing poker. We had just wrapped uh, December 2004. I had won at this point like uh, $3,000 so far in my career and I was heading into January with a burst of confidence, running on a heater and uh, I think that's pretty much uh, where where we left off. So let's hop let's hop right back in. In uh, I, I still remember in December of of 2004, Pacific Poker announced that they that I remember the exact promotional line. It was ring in the new year with our no limit hold'em cash games, which uh, was the first time they had ever offered no limit hold'em cash on the site. So I remember being really excited about this, and I went and told my friend Chuck that I was going to play some no limit cash, <laughs> and he goes, "Fantastic! Now you can blow your." Money ten times as fast, clown. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Uh, so I remember playing a fifty cent, a dollar, no limit with uh, about the three k or so in my account, and I lost like three buy-ins. I was playing uh, mostly heads up, and uh, I remember distinctly remember not having a clue like what to bet, like what the right sizing was, because I remember I had only come from limit hold'em and I had never played a hundred big blind deep cash before. I'd only played like shorter stack cash games and shorter stack tournaments. Even when I played live cash, we always bought in like short, so I never had a hundred big blinds before and I was just like totally confused and lost. And um, I, I felt like it was very beatable. I mean, obviously, I just I just didn't I, I couldn't really figure it out, and there was really nothing I could read or or study that would really teach me anything at the time. So I wanted to get better, but for the time being, I figured I would stick with limit hold'em. So in in January, my bankroll kept growing. I uh, I planned on moving up to ten twenty every time I had four thousand dollars in my account, which uh, you know is a little aggressive, but not like super aggressive. Wow, this guy is going nuts on this fire here. Uh, <laughs> the fire commentary is the key part of these story time episodes, right? Uh, so my bankroll kept on growing. I had a couple of, of like scary, scary days of like huge swings. Um, I I had a pretty good January though, all in all. Um, let's pull up some of these graphs here. Um, so, uh, on the most part, I, I had my biggest losing day of my career so far. I lost $600 at 10.20 in two hours, which is not like anything absurd or anything like that. And uh, my limit hold'em play I actually made $1,100 in limit hold'em in January, which is pretty sweet. And I also had my first outright win in a tournament. I played a $33 buy-in tournament with 188 people, and I, I shipped that for $1,692. So yeah, that's $1,600 or $1,700 almost was uh, a pretty huge score, obviously, for me. And that was great for confidence after getting second so many times. And I got second in a 550 for for $500 also in a 700-man field. So I was doing well in tournaments. I was I was doing decently in limit hold'em and uh, playing only a little bit of no limit cash, not really having any success. This is also a time in my life where I first uh, added another site to my repertoire. So I started playing on party poker as well, and not just playing on on Pacific. So by the end of January, I had earned. By the end of January, I had earned $5,400 over my poker career, which had amounted to 850 table hours, but I'm not really sure the number is right, to be honest. The number might be off, but according to the diary that I was writing in 2006, it was about 860 table hours, and I had earned about $5,400 at the time. Uh, so you can see that nice little that nice little uh, valley in there, which is that scary downswing and then that spike in uh, in December. But uh, doing better, we recovered. We did we did pretty good in there. Remember that I also was still in. Uh, I, I was a 17 year old college kid at this point and had no expenses to live with my parents. Like all I had to pay was really like my insurance or whatever. Like I didn't really have a lot of expenses. So all the money I won went back into poker, which is obviously great if you're trying to, to make a run at it and build a career, obviously, or build even not necessarily a career, but build a bankroll. Um, let's see what other pictures I have here. Oh, this is a uh, this is a uh, career earnings until the end of January uh, by date. So you can kind of see how long it took me to actually get anything going. Like my first recorded session is the 16th of August, and uh, by the 13th <laughs> by the 13th of November, there's like it's barely up to like 500. And uh, and then obviously we've had some accelerated growth since since then. Like look at this period, how insane this is comparatively. This December to January heater is just is just in, in ridiculous. Um, and then I think there's one more from the time here. 
one more from January. Oh yeah, this is uh, our first pie chart. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah, so this is uh, uh, the places I played in January, I believe only, um, which I divided my time mostly still on Pacific, but a little bit on on party poker as well. So uh, <laughs> we head into February, feeling good, and I'm going to show you my 510 limit hold'em graph for February. Oh, look at that. It must have been a great month. We made 1200 bucks on 510. Uh, not exactly. February was the first month in my poker career that I actually lost money. Um, I, I ended up losing $155.76 in the month of February 2005. And uh, I lost money in no limit hold'em cash games, in sit and goes, in tournaments, and most stakes of limit hold'em. Everything except for for five ten. In fact, only five ten limit hold'em was the positive. Was, five ten was the only source of a positive income for me in the entire month of February 2005. And uh, I had been I'd been fighting all month to get something going and having no success. And by the middle of the month, I felt pretty good about it. I felt pretty good about what I had my recovery. Let's pull that graph up here. Um, so this is my graph until February 21st, 2005. So uh, it was very swinging. Every one of these huge down spikes is from 10, 20 limit hold'em when I would take a shot and then just lose. Um, so like, yeah, this one is 10, 20. This one is is 10, 20. This little thing is 10, 20. Like everything pretty much is 10, 20. These huge down spikes. So uh, on the afternoon, uh, I, th this this was about the time in my life where I started to really feel negative about limit hold'em. It just felt very like restrictive and uh, like there wasn't enough I could do to like really influence the outcome of what would happen to me. So this was probably the beginning of the end for my limit hold'em love, I think. And not that I ever really loved it, but it definitely was the beginning of my hatred for it. <laughs> I guess one, I guess that's the the true way to put that. But uh, on the afternoon of the 21st of February, I once again started a 1020 session. Can't, I didn't, never learned my lesson, apparently. And uh, things immediately started going really badly. And uh, before, before I knew it, I had played for 10 hours, and I, I had lost, uh, I had lost 10, uh, sorry, yeah, 10,000. I had lost $2,000. And uh, I kept grinding, 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 and ended up quitting down fifteen hundred sixty two dollars for my biggest loss ever losing uh losing sixteen hundred in one day like a third of my of my bankroll or something like that it was uh it was tough but i remember not being that upset by it like i, I remember feeling like i had played pretty well and i, I wasn't i wasn't like too frustrated i i remember i remember getting like flushed over flushed a couple times with like a de decent flush and i i distinctly remember i think i had like the the five no uh, that was actually a different a different session, but I remember some limit hold'em hands from back in the day, and it was just like from this era. And uh, there were obviously a lot of coolers. You have to have a lot of coolers to lose sixteen hundred bucks at a ten twenty game one tabling. But uh, but yeah, so let's pull up some of the some of the graphs from here. There are a lot of them. So uh, this is my February two thousand five earnings graph. So it's uh, it's uh, that little thing in there is from that one session where we lost all that money in that one day, but I still ended up almost even for the month after everything was all said and done, like I said. So you know it was a little frustrating, but ultimately it was not you know the worst. Uh, this is my limit hold'em graph for February. So I actually won money at limit hold'em thanks to five ten, despite all the the swings and shot takes. And actually, I would I would say that several times in my career, I would like win money in like lower limits and then just lose in the higher limits, end up breaking even for the month. Like I was always fine with that. I I, I felt like shot taking was something you always wanted to do to just try to like you know get to the next level faster and just try to accelerate uh, growth and all that. This is my MTT graph for February, which is awesome. My MTT earnings, which is not really earnings, as I lost like $500 for the for the month of February. And this is my uh, earn earn by location in uh, February. So I actually lost on Pacific and won on Party, which is uh, uh, a rare thing throughout my career, to be honest. Uh, this graph is the this is a interesting interesting graph of the. Earnings that I had had up to this point, in end of February, uh, compared to the hour or the hours that I had played, or this might even be, oh yeah, hours played, right? So at this point, I had played almost 1,100 hours of poker that I had recorded, which, like I said, I'm not 100% sure is accurate. Um, 
but I feel like it's probably close and uh, maybe it's like, it, it's gotta be near that. I feel like the number is higher. Maybe I didn't track some, some of like the free roll wins and maybe I didn't track some other different things, but I, I analyzed that number and didn't feel like that was correct. But uh, still, that's what I wrote at the time. So I'm not gonna really argue with it too much, but it might be inaccurate. Like I said, this whole thing could be slightly inaccurate, but I'm, I feel pretty confident with the, the accuracy of it. So, uh, I mean, I'm glad I have these graphs to begin with. I'm not gonna really question them. So uh, I think that was the only other graph that I hadn't shown you guys yet. Uh, yeah, that was it. So by uh, by the end of February, I hadn't really done any differently than I had done on the end of January. I, I was still at like that same like $5,000 earning mark or, or just about there. Um, yeah, I was at like that 5,500, 5,400 earning mark lifetime. And uh, I, I still felt confident. I didn't feel like I had taken too bad of a downswing in, in February. I mean, it, it was like, I felt like at this point I understood variance, which is a joke. <laughs> like I had any clue what variance was like back then. But uh, I still felt like I was doing okay and that I could, I could recover. My goal was to make, remember, $10,000 by my birthday on April 15th in uh, 2005. So I felt optimistic about that. And I felt even more optimistic when I saw that Pacific had announced that they were doing a $1 million guarantee tournament. I think it was a $600 or $400 buy-in in uh, March. And that felt like that was going to be the thing. That was going to be like, it was like the, the biggest tournament I would ever have played in. I, I was so excited for it. And I thought that was going to be the, the ticket to, to 10000 so you'll have to come back next time to see if that's the case or not. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. A little bit shorter today, but it's Friday. Everyone likes short videos on Friday, right? We're busy people on Friday. Uh, I'll be back doing some more running up. As you can see, I'm back in Las Vegas, back in home sweet home here. So there'll be lots of cool videos. I want to start streaming. I probably will stream either like Sunday or Monday, but stay tuned on Twitter for that. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to comment below if you enjoyed this video. I'll be back with more tomorrow. See you guys soon. Peace.